So in deference to Ramadan, lawyers are asking the Pentagon to hold off force-feeding Gitmo inmates during the day out of respect for the religious holiday. Meanwhile, the U.N. Human Rights Council's Commission of Inquiry on Syria has found, much like in other places of the world, Christians are under attack by Islamic militias. Those who do not flee often end up dead. Just last week, a Catholic Syrian priest named Fran Father Francis Murad was murdered by Syrian rebels. The media here does a great but very easy job focusing on extremism here. We target those god-awful ghouls like the Phelps family because they're easy. Comedians and activists love to exercise their outrage muscles on them. Makes them feel good without doing too much work. But that's just one sad family, and they aren't really trying to blow up marathons. So if you had real guts, you'd stop by a mosque and you'd ask them about the other factions around the world festering hate. We embrace tolerance, yet those expecting it remain immune from its demands, and we tolerate their intolerance for fear we might hurt their feelings. It's called Islamophobia phobia. This is not just a recipe for mayhem worldwide. It's inviting the devil to your doorstep and handing them the key. Hey, Bob, why are we so scared of calling out deadly extremism around well, the world? Well, you know, I, I think uh, what, what we're afraid of here, I guess, is some sort of sensitivity about a bunch of people because the assumption is that that vast majority of those people are not right. radicals. And so we're trying to go out of our way to figure out if we could cut out the radicals and dump on them without dumping on the other 85% of them, if in fact it is 85%. But what gets me angry here, and it has been, as you know, for months, is the treatment of Muslims of Christians. Mm -hmm. Now, we have another example of Christians being killed in Syria. We have had this going on in Nigeria. We've had it going on in Egypt, and I've said this over and over again, and I don't know what my government is doing about this, but it is time for this to stop. If this is what you consider your religion, and this is what you consider your great prophet to do, then you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, and we've been tolerant with you. And the time to be tolerant is coming to an end here. These people have a right to practice their religions, and you have no right, none, to treat them that way. We treat your people well, you should treat our people well, and if not, our allies ought to gather with us and do something about it. Mm. Andrea, what do you think? We bend over backwards to condemn nonviolent extremism mm -hmm. in our own countries, uh, the, in our own country, like bigotry, common bigotry, but we cower when this stuff is deadly. Mm -hmm. And Bob mentioned that we go out of our way to do this in the hopes that they'll change. Yeah. I'll save you the suspense. They won't. Again, they will not stop until we're all Muslims or we are ruled by Muslims. And being nice and talking sweet doesn't work. The only thing they understand is a two by four over the head. Bottom line, period. One of the most disgusting injustices, Greg, in addition to what Bob said about the persecution of Christians, is the real war on women in the Middle East, the way they treat women and the way that they treat homosexuals. And I'm sick and tired of liberals in this country and the media ignoring it. It is one issue where right and left can come together and really expose the injustices in this world, but instead they focus on the Republican Party, they focus on Christians, they focus on everybody but people who do not fit into their narrative. And it's it's really, it's dangerous, and we're going to learn the hard way. Yeah. More people are going to have to die, can unfortunately. I, can I make one more point? If, 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 the, if there are such things as moderate Muslims, if you're not willing to stand up and say something and allow this to go on and let your religion be dominated by these thugs and these anti-human uh, beings, then for the life of me, no wonder your religion is starting to get a bad word around the world. And it's going to get it unless you stand up. But you don't have the guts to stand up. So, Eric, uh, yes, thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> look, uh, there's the other one that, that's going on in the news right now, yeah, Egypt. Right. Um, President Obama's kind of, he's, he's kind of stuck right now because remember when... Um, Hosni Mubarak had to, had to go. He had to go. An ally. The people, an ally, our <laughs> ally. People, the people of Egypt wanted him out, and the yeah. people have spoken. Well, now that those same people want um, Mohammed Morsi out because he was what everyone thought here was he was going to be a Muslim Brotherhood uh, extremist. He's pushing it more into a Muslim Brotherhood dictatorship, and now they don't want him. But President Obama, now what's he going to do? Mm -hmm. He can't. He was the one who, who helped facilitate Mohammed Morsi. Now he is really stuck. He doesn't know what to do. Look, what he really needs to do is, if he was, if it was with the people, then he has to stay with the people now and get uh, it's Mubarak out. It's almost like Egypt is a lot like Iran in 2009. Uh, I'm sorry, get Morsi out. I'm yeah, sorry. Morsi out. Uh, you mean the Green Revolution. Yeah, and Charles Krauthammer pointed that out last night. That that was another place where 
uh, President Obama stayed on the fence. Well, and now there's this neutrality that they're trying to navigate. And I, I do think that there are a lot of um, Muslims that, are, that a lot of Americans do business with every day, mm -hmm. uh, also in the medical profession. There is a lot of ways to, right. um, to work together. And one of those is something Bob and I would disagree on, and that's on uh, students. I think the only way to help change this and change the course of history is to continue to have Western nations educating younger Muslims. Mm. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big advocate for that. So the, some of the biggest protests ever in the history of the world happening right now in Egypt. It's, um, it's difficult for America to stay on the sidelines, but in some ways, maybe President Obama, maybe that's the right thing to do. How do, how do we compete, though, with a Saudi Arabia that spends billions of dollars educating young Muslims on Wahhabism, which is so anti-West, uh, so dangerous, so radical, and they're just growing. I mean, Islam is on the march, and we are officially in retreat. The time to stand up was in 2009 against it's the Green Revolution, for us and he wasn't even, Greg, on the fence. President Obama wasn't even outside. He was in the basement hiding. It's time for us to stop calling Saudi Arabia an ally and calling for what they are was an antagonist to the United States. All right.